This week we'll be taking you to Fort Wayne, Indiana. To witness the battle of the two-wheel drive modifieds. Part of the first national pulling event ever to be held at Bearfield Raceways here in Fort Wayne, Indiana. We'll be right back with our first pulling event. Welcome to Fort Wayne, Indiana, home of the Hoosiers and host of the 1987 Redman TNT All-American Pulling Series. We're here at Bearfield Raceways this afternoon, the battleground for what promises to be a fierce, modified two-wheel drive fight to the finish. It's already been a stormy weekend, both on the track and off. Bad weather stole the thunder from most of the two-wheelers last night, halfway through the first event. Jim Lyons and Mark Hare were tied for first, both with full pulls. Then the bottom fell out, washing up the pull-off and the rest of the night's competition. We haven't seen any rain yet today, but we've already heard lots of thunder. Four by four thunder, that is. This unpredictable Indiana dirt has gone from molasses to concrete overnight, giving a record 16 four-wheelers enough bite to go the distance for back-to-back -back full pulls. Jerry Weaver and his nationwide Chevrolet finally came out on top in the pull-off, with Greg Cook's Wild Blue second and young Scott Smith in the Three Bears close behind for third. It's not yet certain if this track can weather another round of competition or if it will turn back into a churned up mud bog full of grandma's molasses. But one thing is for certain, there's another storm brewing and this time the threat is not from the dark clouds above. The two wheelers are rumbling down the track once again and we're witnessing gale force warfare as these guys go head to head to recapture the thunder they lost last night. Wayne Rausch and his yellow Model T have already ridden into town from Dublin, Ohio to set the mark to beat today at 273 feet. We join the action now as Roger Simon rolls up to the line in Simon Says out of Farley, Iowa. Roger's taking a gamble by putting all his weight on the front end, hoping to keep those dirt-hungry rear tires from eating up too much of this delicate track. It'll be a balancing act all the way, but Roger could have just the ticket for a full pull. Let's see if his gamble pays off. Roger Simon rolls the dice, but finishes just shy of the distance to beat. Well, Roger Simon climbing on out of his funny car. He got a beautiful looking piece here, Roger, and uh, made a pretty nice run. Uh, right close to the lead, I believe you're holding on to second right now. Seemed like the, the car lifted a little bit and then settled down. He lost a little traction, but still wasn't too bad. Yeah, I think I could have did a little better. I had a ride to left brake quite hard, and we didn't quite have the car weighted right. So last night wasn't too good a test because the track was different. And, Oh, we feel we did real great, you okay. know, for a funny car. Now the engine combination, the wheelbase combination, notice how close the front and rear wheels are to each other. Last night the track was slippery, they had some problems with it. That combination worked perfect for this young man right here. Normally the short wheelbase combination works real good down in South Texas, Southern Oklahoma, down in Florida on the sandy type track. Last night it worked awfully well for this young man right here. Out of Seidel, Illinois, it's a 38 Ford, 426 Chrysler Hemi engine. It's a great young doing the driving. Frank Young's stubby little 38 comes up short in today's unpredictable dirt. Carl Downing is up next in the Super Shaker from Columbia City, Indiana. Carl had super problems with the Shaker in today's first run. This will be Carl Downing coming out. He pulled number one, dropped at the number six spot. A moment ago, the engine had a problem. Remember we told you about the right fuel, white fuel coming out the exhaust to indicate it was not firing? Same thing.
Carl Downing still not able to shake his problems today with a super shaker. Well, the super shaker just couldn't quite get it together right here yet. It's not like fuel problems. Yeah, that's right. I just, this is my second time out this year. Brand new truck, new motor. We're just trying to get things sorted out. Uh, you think it's just a problem with the injection system right now? Yeah, it's just a matter of getting the right, right nozzles and the right jets in it and get it ironed out. It just takes a while to do it. Okay, good luck to you. Thank you. The Super Shaker is followed by another Super Chevy, none other than the Super Rat from Maiden, North Carolina. Right now out of the Tar Heel State of North Carolina, the Super Rat backing up. Lloyd Hauser doing the driving. Hauser runs a big block Chevrolet, alcohol burning, 512 cubic inch alcohol burning Chevrolet. They call him the Super Rat out of Madden, North Carolina. The Super Rat scampers out of the hole, but can't bite hard enough to take a chunk out of the lead. Well, Lloyd came up a little bit short, but it looked like he had a good time anyway. Yeah, that's a good pull through this truck, and uh, I've had some problems. I had water in it from the rain last night. It's a good pull through this truck. Well, I know, that you, I know that the motor you have in here isn't quite as big as some of the other guys, so you just want to you just want to get in the money. That's where you want to be. There you go. Just get in the top five would be fine with me. Mike Stowe is up next from Warrentown, Georgia, letting his bad dog out of the pen to tangle with the Super Chevys here this afternoon. Mike actually has two mean dogs on his leash. The Ares-equipped 68 Ford you see growling up to the line today has an even more vicious cousin called Bulldog Bite. Mike runs in the modified tractor class. Better watch out, because both of them can eat you alive. A bad dog bite, Ford out of Warrington, Georgia. Mike Stowe doing a driving the Stowe family pulling team. Whoa, good shot. The track looks to be coming back again. Mike Stowe and the bad dog chew up the dirt and jump into number one. Well, Mike, I tell you what, uh, moved into number one, a really nice looking pull. Had her going good all the way. Yeah. <laughs> boy, I just hope she can hold up, John. Uh, you know, we had a little bad luck last night with the rain and all, but, boy, this class is awful tough, and you can't make a mistake here. If you do, you just down. Well, I know that you hedged everything a little bit with the competition that's waiting back here to go yet. Yeah, everybody's kind of watching, you know. Everybody want to know what you're doing with your weights, you know, and... I didn't really know, but we just took a shot, and it wasn't too bad. I wanted to be able to keep the front end up when I got here, and I was lucky enough to keep it up. I believe I might have got a, a few feet ahead there. We just had to wait and see. We're right in the middle of a two-wheel drive dogfight, with Mike Stowe's bad dog chasing Wayne Roush into second place. But don't go away, because Wayne's loading up the little red truck to go dog hunting one more time right after this. We're back with more two-wheel drive warfare from Bearfield Raceways in Fort Wayne, Indiana. So far, Mike Stowe's bad dog is chopping down hard on the number one position, with Wayne Roush in second and Roger Simon in third. But the dog fight's not over yet. Wayne Roush is about to go after the dog once more, this time in the 82 Dodge Ram he calls the Little Red Truck. Wayne sitting on top of a lightweight Engler-built chassis, powered by over 500 cubic inches of supercharged Chrysler Hemi. Just what he needs to send the bad dog running with his tail between his legs. Let's see if the little red truck has what it takes to snatch number one from the jaws of the bad dog and put it back into the hands of Wayne Rouse. Look out, here he comes. strong. I don't believe he's going to get a hold of Stowe. Stowe currently your leader at 291.8. Wayne Roush fires too close to the ground in his last shot at the lead. 
Well, two-wheel drive, the weight's critical. Looked like he had it hit pretty well, but you just never really did get locked in too well. Yeah, the Firestone tires, I think the CPEX are working a little bit better today. You have the Firestones on this truck and the CPEX on the other. That's right. <laughs> and it's sort of a, you're sort of hedging your bet, getting one of them to work and take your chances with the other set? That's right. During the winter season, the, the, the Firestones on average did just a little bit better in the CPEX. I think summer it might be reversed. Spike draws up to the line next from Springfield, Ohio, unleashed by the Humphrey Brothers with Mark Hare behind the wheel. Let's see if Mark and Spike can challenge the bad dog to an Aries-powered fight for first place. Mark Hare unable to keep Mad Dog Spike team long enough to take the lead. Well, Mark, it's kind of a close but no cigar situation for you this afternoon. It looked like it was a pretty good run. Couldn't keep, couldn't keep the front end up, though. It was bobbing up and down and just couldn't get it to stay up for you. Yeah, I didn't want to stay up. It, it, it was kind of rough, but I could like it was and that hook. And it just, just didn't want to stay in there and glide like she usually does. Yeah, and uh, Bill Humphrey down here yelling, get up, dog, get up. But it just would, it wouldn't get up and stay up. It was just a kind of a jumpy run for you. Yeah, I don't know. The track's kind of rocky, and it's it's not consistent like some of them are. Up next is another home state Hoosier, Jim Mowry, and his speed wagon. Right now, the business at hand, REO speed wagon. Decatur, Indiana, they call home. Driver's ready to go. Supercharged engine set right on the nose of the vehicles. Two-wheel drive, super modified. Competition on the TNT Redman All-American Pulling Series. Boo, something let go right there. Motor's still running. I don't know exactly what the pop was front. He could have lifted a supercharger belt. We'll have to wait and see. The helmet comes off the driver. Since Jim didn't make it past the official start line, he'll get a second chance to make a run later. Here comes Leo K up to the line next, driving the Aries-equipped driller from Lewis Run, Pennsylvania. Let's see if he can drill his way right past the bad dog for number one. Normally this engine runs a top fuel car to drag race or a funny car that'll power them at well over 250 to 260 mile an hour. Right now, Leo just wants to get out 300 feet of real bad clay in Fort Wayne, Indiana. All he wants to do is go further than 291 feet, eight inches. He'll be satisfied with that. run for Leo K, but not nearly enough distance to steal the lead. Not too bad, Leo, but it got down there to the end when the weight came on you really skied the front end. We were probably 100 pounds light in the front. Uh, motor sounded good, though, and it was, I still got you probably in the top five, so it wasn't all that bad. No, it wasn't too bad at all. Up next is Jesse Pendleton, behind the wheel of his classic rig from Linden, Ohio. This is only the second or third time out for the truck, we understand. It's called Rough Cut. It's a 30s model truck, a Diamond T truck, I think the official body style on it, comes out, Chrysler Hemi engine. Jesse, phenomenally famous for running what we call a fat motor. You watch it before he gets ready to run and when he gets finished, you will see some flames coming out. He runs a lot of fuel, a lot of lead in his engine. The rough cut, coming out now, Jess Pendleton. cut just can't cut it today coming up way short of the distance to be well i'll tell you what in a two-wheel drive class anything goes it's certainly an interesting piece you got here thank you we tried to build something a little different we uh run a tractor for several years and it was a little bit different so when we decided to go with the truck we wanted the same thing <laughs> well I, I tell you what i love that hood ornament i'm not sure what it is so <laughs> <laughs> well we'll just call it a donkey since this may be on the air <laughs> all right the fur is still flying here in Fort Wayne as Mark Hare Spike nips at the heels of Mike Stowe's bad dog and Leo K drills past Wayne Roush for third. Don't go away. We'll be right back with more two-wheel drive warfare in just a minute.
We're back for the conclusion of today's two-wheel drive dogfight from Fort Wayne, Indiana. Here again to take one more shot is Jim Mowry and the Speedwagon. Remember, Jim ran out of luck way before he ran out of track in his first run today. Now it looks like the Speedwagon is ready to go. Let's see what he can do. Oh no, more bad luck for Jim Mowry. His speed wagon catches fire, but still can't manage to burn up much track. Ken Lamont hitches a ride into town next on the Midnight Express from Crossville, Illinois. Let's see if he has the ticket to send Mike Stowe on a one-way trip to the dog pound this afternoon. The Midnight Express gets derailed and grinds to a halt way short of its final destination. Ken, I know you're not going to be real, real thrilled about that run, but the uh, motor sounded like it was running real good, and uh, but you just didn't get, ever get a hold of anything out there. No, I didn't, John. I, I think I'm going to label this, instead of the Midnight Express tour, it might be the Nightmare Express tour. <laughs> I, I don't know. Luck's going to have to fall this way one of these days. It will. It'll come back around. Always it does. 41 Dodge, Dave Beebery. Dan Beebrick doing the driving. Jim Brockman owned vehicle. Goes under the name of In-Laws and Outlaws. Local fellow, hometown boy. I tell you, it's really strange the luck of the draw in this class. Beebrick driving Brockman's yellow truck. That's what we're looking at now. They call this their hometown. He draws, and his boss draws right behind him at the bottom of the field. So this could kind of be dramatic, build a little drama into this thing. shot it looks like he will pull up into the top five spot believe me it's not over till the fat lady sings we have two more left on the TNT red man series two more remaining Dan a pretty good run actually uh, I don't know you moved into the probably I think third place on that uh, we couldn't decide back there what to do weight wise and finally when I did decide uh, I think I went the wrong gear I should have been down one gear well, I don't know. It, uh, it was lugging the motor pretty hard, but, uh, you know, it looks like you got it most out of it as you could. Yeah, I think so, but that's kind of hard on the engine when you do it that way. <laughs> well, I don't know. It's the results, and it didn't look like everything held together. So far, so good, yeah. Okay, we'll wait and see what Jim can do. Uh, I hope he can get it out. Out on the heels of his own hometown hired gun, here's the boss himself, Jim Brockman, loading up to fire the next round at number one in this two-wheel drive fight to the finish. New Haven, Indiana, he calls home. This is his hometown track. He wants to win it for you. Kind of be a Cinderella story if he can. He drew at the bottom of the field. Brockman definitely capable of making the horsepower at the track. We'll hold it. Strong run, drawing late in the field. Jim Brockman just doesn't have enough horsepower to chase the bad dog out of his own backyard today. It was a good looking run, but just just couldn't get any ground speed, really. No, the sled's dragging pretty hard today. Uh, we moved some weight to the back, trying to you know think that we could get a little bit more ground speed by waiting the back end, but uh, unfortunately, the, the sled just beat us. That's all, you know. <laughs> this is it. The last chance today to snatch first place away from the strong jaws of the bad dog. Lloyd Hauser scampers up to the line again next with yet another member of the Rat Pack. This time he's going after the big cheese in the Daddy Rat Chevy. Let's see if Daddy Rat can gnaw a big bite out of the bad dog. The bad dog 
dog is going to stay on top as the fur finally stops flying in today's fierce two-wheel drive competition. Yeah, John, Dad will be real happy when I call him tonight. He wasn't too happy after last night. You know, I mean, with the way the brakes and everything went last night, you know, we just got it. We're in a bad position in the day. It just turned around. You just got to keep in there and keep trying. That's all you can do. Well, you know, in this two-wheel drive class, it's, you know, uh, horsepower and uh, tire pressure, weight and everything. And, and the guys are so evenly matched, it's, it's a tough battle every weekend. Oh, yeah, John, this class is probably the most competitive class in track pulling right now, that, or even in the past that I can even remember. There's so many vehicles now with so good of equipment. It, it's just unreal. The guy, the guy that gets it together and has the right draw, and gets his weight right and everything, he's going to be the man to beat. There ain't no doubt. Right now, underneath the pulling, it's the sport of power, and no pulling vehicle better demonstrates it than the modified 4x4 Texas Rose of Manuel Marino. In two months, he's vaulted from fifth to first in the point standings. His edge has been the biggest automotive type engine in any pulling vehicle on the Redman TNT circuit today. 704 cubic inches of aluminum block monster motor. Marino has a narrow six and a half point lead over Bob and Scott Smith, a father and son team. From there, it's almost 70 points back to third place and the nationwide truck of Jerry Weaver. Chevrolet dominates in the modified 4x4 class, claiming the first three places and eight of the top ten. Meanwhile, side-by-side -side monster truck racing and two-wheel drive truck pulling roar into Freedom Hall in Louisville, Kentucky, October 16th and 17th. And the Indiana Hoosier Dome in Indianapolis hosts a pulling and monster truck racing spectacular Saturday, November 14th.